good morning let us study the formation of the rectus sheath using a model for better understanding of the layers of the rectus sheath we can have a model like this actually this is actually the rectus abdominis muscle this is actually the rectus abdominis muscle of either side okay this is the sternum these are the ribs lower ribs okay this is actually the pelvic bone this is actually the pubic part okay pubis you can see the rectus ab abdominis is starting from the pubic bone and extending over the costal margin so it is extending few inches above the costal margin okay so it is resting over the ribs also okay so this rectus abdominis you can see the tendinous intersections three consistent tendinous intersection one at the level of umbilicus one at the level of the costal margin and one between these two okay these are three tendinous intersection this is the umbilicus okay this is the umbilicus okay now after understanding the specimen now we'll see three muscles which are responsible for forming the rectus sheath one is the posterior most muscle that is the transverse abdominis okay posterior most muscle of the anterior abdominal wall that is the transverse abdominis then over the transverse abdominis we have internal oblique muscle okay we have internal oblique muscle and this is the aponeurotic layer of internal oblique muscle okay next we have the third or the superior most layer that is the external oblique muscle and the external oblique aponeurosis okay so that is the order okay now we'll study the formation of the rectus sheath at three different regions one above the level of the above the level of the costal margin if you see here see the posterior wall is deficit because it is resting directly over the ribs okay only the anterior wall is present which is entirely covered by the external oblique aponeurosis so this is the internal oblique which will not cover above the costal margin so this is the external oblique so external oblique only will form the anterior covering of the rectus sheath at this first part okay okay posterior layer is deficit now coming to the second part which will be extending from the costal margin up to arcuate line this is the arcuate line how to identify the place of arcuate line it is the midway between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis you can see this is the midway between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis that is the position of arcuate line this is the arcuate line which is formed by the inferior part of the transverse abdominis tendon okay aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis on the posterior aspect okay okay so the posterior layer is formed by one the transverse abdominis okay and over the transverse abdominis we have this internal oblique muscle which is splitting into two lamina one is the anterior lamina and other one is posterior lamina the posterior lamina will go behind the posterior lamina will go behind the muscle okay like this okay so now the posterior layer is formed by two structures one is the transverse abdominis uh, the tendon of the transverse abdominis that is the aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis and the posterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle okay and the posterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle that is in the middle part posterior layer if you see the anterior layer of the middle part it is formed by the anterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle anterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle and also the external oblique muscle this external oblique you have to understand it is entirely covering the muscle from the origin to the insertion okay so that is the anterior lamina that is the anterior layer which is formed by the external oblique and the anterior lamina of the internal oblique okay now we'll see below the level of arcuate line as you see below the level of the arcuate line there is uh, there is no rectus sheath it is directly the muscle is resting directly on the transfer, uh, transversalis fascia fascia transversalis okay now if you see the anterior layer it is formed by all the layers so you can see this is again the transverse abdominis posterior uh, this is the trans the layer from the transverse abdominis the last muscle you can see okay the layer from the transverse abdominis then the anterior and the posterior laminas of anterior and the posterior laminas of the internal oblique and also the external oblique so all the three muscles aponeurotic layer will form the anterior bound anterior covering but posterior covering is deficit so this is a model to demonstrate 
the coverings which are formed at the rectus abdominis muscle. Okay, anterior and the posterior covering of rectus abdominis at three different levels. Thank you.